I live in the Bay Area, so I think about earthquakes a lot. And maybe more than the average person who lives here even because I'm a bit obsessed with natural disasters, giant disasters in general, um, and what I would do if I found myself in one. So once I moved here, I turned that from a general obsession with various disasters like plane crashes, tornadoes, tsunamis, and then I, I got a very specific obsession with earthquakes. As a state, California is basically guaranteed to experience a big 6.7 or higher earthquake in the next 30 years. Scientists can't really predict exactly when an earthquake is going to happen, uh, but they can examine historical data and geological surveys and tell us our relative chances over longer periods of time. The major faults of California are very well studied. So we actually know that there's about a 30% chance that the big one is going to happen right here in my neighborhood in uh, the Bay Area, right on the Hayward Fault. Uh, a total 63% chance of it happening uh, elsewhere in the Bay Area on one of the other faults. Um, the predictions for LA are similar, uh, but a little worse. They stand a 67% chance that's going to happen in the LA area. Um, and they have a higher chance that it's going to be higher than 6.7. It's not just California, of course, that geologists are studying. There's a global network of seismological data that is constantly being updated because our planet's plates are just constantly moving, rubbing up against each other, pushing together, pulling apart. It's kind of sexy when I put it like that. Uh, I use an app on my phone called QuakeFeed. It's free. Uh, this is not an ad. Um, it shows me all of the most recent earthquakes that are recorded around the world as they happen. Considering that I get alerts about earthquakes that happen literally like in the middle of the Pacific Ocean without so much as a deserted island around, I was shocked to recently realize that there are quite large gaps in our understanding and monitoring of earthquakes in certain parts of the world. I recently stumbled across Raspberry Shake, and I found it absolutely delightful for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a low-cost seismograph that is able to be used by an absolute amateur. Citizen science at its finest. Uh, they start at under $500 and we can put them anywhere, like in schools where kids can learn about seismology, geology, and technology. Uh, and then there's the name. I mean... It runs on the incredibly efficient uh, Raspberry Pi processor, which is a simple, easy to use, tiny, inexpensive computer. So they called it Raspberry Shake. That is adorable. I love it. Uh, here's the other reason I love it. It made me curious why there would be a need for this outside of purely educational opportunities. And so I looked into it and I found a pilot study, which is in preprint. It hasn't gone through peer review, um, but it explained the issue to me very well. The researchers in this case used Haiti as a test subject. Back in January of 2010, Haiti experienced a devastating 7.0 earthquake. At that point in time, the authors point out that the country had no seismic network, no in-country seismologists, no active fault map, no seismic hazard map, no microzonation. That's the idea where you build your city uh, in line with the geology of the area so that uh, your people are as protected as possible from an earthquake. Um, Haiti didn't even have a building code. Because of all of that, they're still trying to recover from that quake nine years later. Following that earthquake, both global and local governmental agencies set up earthquake monitoring stations in Haiti. But by the time the next big earthquake hit in 2018, only one of those stations was even working. The 2010 earthquake financially devastated an already struggling country. And in its aftermath, they just didn't have the money or the people to keep those stations operating. It's a testament to my own privilege that with my obsession about earthquakes and all the data I have about earthquakes at my fingertips, I didn't even consider that there are places where it's just not easy to set up research facilities to monitor what's happening. There's a huge hole in our data collection. That means they don't have the historical data that we have here in California. Uh, in Haiti, they don't have the, the current data for the small earthquakes that are happening every single day. Um, they don't have all of their faults clearly mapped out, and they don't have anyone helping the public understand 
what earthquakes are, why they happen, and how citizens can be better prepared for the next one. So enter the Raspberry Shake. Uh, the researchers installed nine of these little seismographs in homes and businesses around the country, teaching the people there how to use them and how to see their output. They managed to almost immediately start recording earthquakes that weren't being recorded by any other monitoring station. That's pretty awesome. Uh, there are, of course, some downsides. In a place like Haiti, 24-7 electricity and internet are pretty hard to come by. Um, and also conditions aren't always perfect for a seismograph to pick up earthquakes and not like construction or traffic. But both of those problems can be solved with simple overlap. Uh, the relative cheapness of the uh, Raspberry Shake means that it's feasible to install in hundreds of locations that all overlap each other, allowing recordings to happen even if some of them aren't operational. And then you can compare the recordings to filter out the noise of traffic and construction and things like that. So through this system, developing countries like Haiti might be able to utilize citizen scientists who can set up a network of detectors that works better than the large nationally funded facilities. How cool is that? And at the same time, the people running the detectors would be learning more about them and more about earthquakes, becoming actively engaged in what they're doing. And this isn't just kids, this is everyone. The researchers pointed out that the people they signed on to house these machines had a lot of questions, including things like, can this predict earthquakes? Which, no, it can't. We can't predict earthquakes. But this can eventually help us make long-term predictions and better prepare people for earthquakes. The researchers suggest developing a, a friendly app that helps non-scientists understand what the machine is doing, uh, pinging them with a cheery message whenever there's a tiny quake that they can't even feel. Uh, that interaction would also allow uh, such an app to give people regular uh, tips on earthquake preparedness. So more people would learn about earthquakes and they would understand they're happening all the time. And it would be the first step in setting up a real infrastructure. The researchers point out that Haitians are hungry for information. Right now, the information is lacking. So they're filling that gap with pseudoscience. That's what happens. Humans have been doing that for millions of years. There are a lot of people who claim to be able to predict earthquakes, and they're all full of shit. Actually understanding the science behind earthquakes could destroy that predatory industry and replace it with helpful knowledge that can build a better, more stable country. I mean that literally, more stable. So yeah, Raspberry Shake is a really cool idea. I'm so glad that they're out there solving a problem that I didn't even know exist, existed. So go check them out. And if you've got $500 burning a hole in your pocket, pick one up. This isn't an ad, but you know, tell them I sent you. Maybe I'll get a freebie.